to watch it later. So um, I'm going to talk all about teams and what we're looking at and how everything works. Um, we're going to I'm going to share with you real quick. Um, so I had done a PowerPoint presentation because within teams, when I share my screen, I can't share the team view. So I had to do screenshot so that way you guys can kind of hopefully follow along. Um, but I have so I'm going to do that. I might bounce to the corner, um, but I want to kind of show a little bit what I wanted to talk about today. Right. And so um, my hope is that you guys are going to understand a little bit more about what Teams is and how we can collaborate. And I'm going to talk about all the different elements within Teams, such as the activity that you see on the left side, the chat, the files. So all those different options that you see on the left side of your, your team environment. Then I'm also going to show we're going to to actually set up a team. So my hope is that you guys are following along and you are going to create a team and create a meeting and um, you don't and invite somebody with maybe within your group. Right. And then uh, we're going to talk about how to hold a meeting, which is what we're doing right now. So teams has a it's called meeting. Right. So um, we're going to talk about the different features within that. And these are the features that are comparable for those of you that have used Zoom before. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes. OK, thank you, Peggy. Um, I have a. I'm not going to go in slideshow mode because I'll be bouncing in and out between that. So uh, hopefully this is good enough. You the PowerPoint is actually in the Teams group and I'm going to show that here in a minute how to get to that. So. Um, but those are what I hope you guys will get out of today's workshop. So as I mentioned, the overview, we're going to talk about teams. I'm going to first start about the meeting because that's what we're in right now. And the meeting component is similar to Zoom. We're going to join and create a meeting, uh, create a team, invite participants, and then we're going to talk about all the other areas within the team. Okay. So what is teams? So when you when you hear the word teams, you think of, OK, what is that? It's comparable to Zoom, right? Well, well, teams is more than that, right? Teams is basically a, a hub for teamwork and collaboration. So uh, it allows you and it also allows communication within your team. So while there's that meeting component that you can use, right, to connect and have a virtual meeting like we're doing right now, there's more integration with sharing and collaborating on documents and communicating with your team. If you are in the desktop version, the app, when I stop sharing my screen, which is what I'm going to do uh, right this minute. OK, when you're in the desktop app, you should see hopefully a nine grid of people that have their videos on. OK, so you should see that. When you're in the center net version, you only get the one person. So it should be me, I think, because I'm the one talking. Everybody else has their phone mic, um, their microphone muted. OK, so that's why I wanted you guys to download the desktop app, because there's more features within it versus center net uh, like we've done with PowerPoint online and Word online. Does that make sense? Thumbs up, thumbs down. OK. My hope if you guys have questions, I'm going to that's why we're going to start off with the meeting. So if you have questions, um, I have Lisa. She's going to be kind of moderating for me. If there's questions, uh, there is a conversations panel and we're going to talk about that here in a minute. And that's where you can post questions or um, there's a raise your hand feature too that we can see. So if you have questions within that and so Lisa's going to kind of moderate that for me within that. OK. So we're all in the virtual meeting uh, now the PowerPoint I have. I want to show you how to get to it first and then we're going to come back. And I'm going to talk about all the different video off button, microphone off those uh, different icons on your toolbar. OK, so if everybody goes to teams on the left side, so see on the left side where it says activity chat teams and assignments. If you click on the team one here, I'm going to I got it. 
add somebody. Okay. If you click on the teams, then you should see a Tech Tuesday Microsoft team group. That should be the team you're part of. And we'll talk about this a little bit more um, within that. So if you click on that team group, it should take you to a screen where you see like a conversation, right? From different conversations. And as I said, I'll talk about this here later on. But if you go to the files tab, do you everybody see general post files, maybe file staff notebook at the top? No, okay, let me go to that presentation. Um, let me go back. So if you click on files, that's where the, the power, the, the files are so I'm going to share. Hold on a second. Let me go down because I know it's down here somewhere. It's joining creating. So this is the basically all the screenshots because as I said, I can't um, share with you. Let me find it. All right here. All right. I can't see it because I don't have my. My thing invite. So you should see like posts and files on here. And hopefully, like I said, if you go to your, let me look at it. Sorry, I don't remember what slide I have it on. To the files, oh, oh that's, that's chatting. There should be, um, did you? I don't know, maybe I didn't grab an image of that. So uh, for those of you that can't get it, I'll make, oh, here's the post area. Okay, so when you go to, when you go to Teams and you click on your Teams, there should be this general on the right side, posts and files. And if you click on files, that's where you're gonna see all the files that I loaded. So you can always come back to this team. I'm not gonna remove anybody from it. So you can always remove, uh, you can come back to that. So I just wanted to show, in case you wanted to follow along with the PowerPoint, um, I'm gonna, like I said, be sharing my screen with you guys on that. So I can't see, at least do we have any questions or comments? Candace, I have, I have one real quick. Yeah. Um, that area where you can see the files button and the things you're talking about, uh -huh. is that within Outlook? online on the browser or is that within the teams <laughs> app that we're using right now for the video okay that is a great question so and this is where it gets a little confusing so that those files are only within the team group so only for those of you that said i'm coming today i had to add you to that group right so you could see or and and the files um so it's not within the OneDrive. I, I could have done that, right? There's a way that you can take files that are in your OneDrive file and put them in there, but I didn't do that. Instead, I just said, no, I'm just gonna dump them in here. Um, so the benefit of doing that is I don't have to then share a link out or things like that. You can still mm -hmm. edit it in OneDrive, but, um, but it basically stays within the team. So if somebody else in your department wanted to see it, they couldn't, unless they were invited to be part of that team. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense. Can I, I help clarify? A little bit. I, I did find it. I was having trouble. I was looking in this app, right? So I like downloaded the Microsoft Teams app, kind of like mm -hmm. you have the Zoom app on your computer. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking in the app for the things you were talking about. But then when I went online to Microsoft Teams with an Outlook, then I was able to see those buttons. Okay. Um, so if anyone else is looking for them, they're, I can't find them anyway. Within the app, I have to go to my mail and click on the boxes and find Microsoft okay. Teams, and then I can see all those. Well, that's good to know. I haven't tested it on an iPad. I have it on my phone and iPad. So Microsoft, and this is a good segue, allows you to only, so once you're logged in, like I try to do a lot of testing uh, with, well, our team last week, we tested it, but you can't, I can't add myself on my iPad to test it. It won't let me. So unless I had a different center account, right, to test it with. So that's something that I think we need to look, um, look a little bit more. So I'll make sure 
to jot that down. But that's great to know because from what I've read about Microsoft and, and some of their, their sessions and webinars, they're like, oh, the app is just as powerful. So um, if you can't find it, then maybe it's not, uh, maybe they don't have it or it's just buried somewhere deep within that. I'm not sure. So thank you for letting me know about that within that are there other questions within that and i should say too we're all we in the ctl we're all learning teams i know its um none of them are on this call but they uh, have been using it a lot more so i have to prepare for this i've learned a lot more about teams so <laughs> i'm learning along with you guys <laughs> so if there's I things that you have a question please uh, who uh, gary has a question but yes okay how do you get Teams in Outlook? How do you get Team in Outlook? You know, you know uh, attaching it. Yeah, so, because Gary, you're in a classroom, so it's going to be a little different um, because you don't have Outlook installed in the classrooms, where if you had Outlook um, on your office computer, they would sync together one by one um, within that we're going to learn how to set up a meeting here in a few minutes and that basically it merges with your um with outlook when you set up a meeting and i'm going to show that here in a minute okay okay are there other questions or comments um, vicky you had a question i guess I see. Um, yes i just wanted so can you you know, in Zoom, you can share your screen. So can you not do that? Because I know you're saying you, you were using the PowerPoint. You can share your screen. I can't share the Teams screen in Teams. So gotcha. I had to make a PowerPoint with all the images because I couldn't just, oh, here's my team screen and then try to show you what I'm talking about. OK, so understand. you can share a screen. It's just not the, what we're used to in Zoom where you could say, oh, here in Zoom, blah, 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 right? Um, okay. There is the option for the desktop. So I'm on my, I'm on a Mac, and I will say if you are a Mac user, you have to set you have to approve your security and privacy settings for screen recording and screen sharing. So I had to enable all that just before I could even share a screen. So I'm not sure with our PC users, but if you try, and and everybody should be able to share a screen. Um, we're going to try that here in a minute, but. If you try, you may have to go into your settings and make some changes because I had to before I could do that. So, so yeah, you can share it. I just there wasn't a way for me to share the team screen. Does that make sense? OK, are there other questions? Anything I'm missing? I know Christy and Lisa are both kind of a moderate. Yeah, Cheryl. I, I think that uh, I might have some issues, too, because I'm on the, the computer that I took home to do work from home, mm -hmm. so I don't have Outlook either yeah on this computer and it popped up when i was having trouble getting on it was kept popping up something about permissions and and stuff too so i don't know if it didn't like my home network or i don't know but it seems to be working at the moment so yeah i i think i think those of you that have like not your office if you don't have an office laptop and you have different um laptops there if things aren't set up correctly the right way there's gonna be some issues probably with with it the the hope is, and I know ITS was talking about trying to deploy teams out. I don't know when everyone's going to be back on campus and kind of that stuff. So um, if if you if you end up coming to campus and you find out you're having issues, just put a help desk call in and they can um, install it for you. But there might be you might have to just be going through CenterNet Cheryl for for this today. So I've got other, it. Other, so. other other questions. Candace, this is Glenda. I have a question. Of course, you sure. know I had issues the other day when I was trying to download it. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, um, like, I can see the nine grid on my one screen, and, like, when you have your PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. But, like, am I supposed to be seeing something else that I can work on? Like, you were talking about setting up teams, because I don't have any of that. So, so, so you don't, do you see on the left side activity, chat, teams, assignments? No. No, I don't have any of that. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. That's okay. yeah. yeah, you should be able to see all that on the left side. And then that's where you can access the PowerPoint stuff. So I'm not sure what's you're on your office computer, too, right? 
Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, okay. So when I share my screen, Glenda, just kind of follow along a little bit, and then we can try to troubleshoot that later. That's fine. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Any other questions? Uh, yes. This is Bruce. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you guys for saying who you are, too. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Bruce. Uh, I've got two questions. Okay. When I, click, when I clicked on the files, it seems like the default is it shows me all the recent Microsoft Office files that I've had open uh, in Word and Excel and and other things. And I just want to know if I'm in a team meeting, are all those files accessible to my mm -hmm. teammates? Because, okay. yeah. So go ahead. No, so I mean, you know, I have things that are confidential, like student grades and stuff yeah. like that. And, I wouldn't want those to be able to leak out to anybody that I happen to be in a meeting with. But yeah. that's what I see when I open up files. So if you go, okay. So if you guys all click on, if you see on the left side, there is the files tab on the left, right under calls. That is your files within OneDrive. So those are all like what you were saying, Bruce, all your recent files that you've been working on, right? Right. Those no one else can see. Those are because you're logged in to Teams with your center email, and it those are all synced with OneDrive, right? Okay, thanks. So yes. those they can't see. The only thing that people can see is when you click on the Teams tab instead. So if you go to like the third one yeah. down right under Chat, right. If you go to Teams right. there, then there's a Files area, and I know that gets a little confusing um, within that. Yeah. I, I had that figured out. I was just concerned about security. And then yeah. the other thing, the other thing that I have, yeah. I can't see anybody but you. Before I opened up the files, I could see the nine grid, um, and then whatever you were sharing on your screen. But I don't know how to get back to that place. Did you pin my video? Because if you uh, pin, so. If you if if I don't know how many of you guys are in the nine grid or not, but if you look over, so if I see Vicky's, she's on the screen, and you have the three little dots next to the person's name, like you see, or I see Kevin Mulvey, and I see microphone muted. If you click the three dots, you can say pin, and it pins that video to the front screen. Okay. So like if I were to do that right now, and Vicky, I'm just gonna pick on you. I hope that's okay. So if I hit pin, because you're the second one right there. I don't know what you guys can see, right? But Vicky is now full screen on my screen. So I would have to pin or unpin or pin multiple people, right? And that means that they're always gonna be on the main screen. So okay. I haven't pinned anybody just so that way I can see the nine grin, but I don't know if I'm pinned and that's why or I'm um, because also I'm talking. And my microphone's not muted because it's always going to bring whoever's talking to the forefront. Did I that fix it? I can't see the files at all. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they should be. Like I said, I'm going to share that screen here um, in a minute within that, too. So, um, and I appreciate everybody who's, who's answering behind the scenes kind of helping as well. Does that help, Bruce? I don't know if you're back at the nine. I don't know also, Bruce, if you're in the center net browser, if you're in a browser, or if you're in the desktop app, because all that's going to be contingent. I'm, I'm in the desktop app, and, okay. and I still I don't know how to get back, but that's okay. I can hear everybody speaking. And okay. I can, well, I, hopefully, hopefully when we go back and forth sharing screens and stuff, something will come back. Okay, so, thank you. And so, I think Lynn, Lynn had a question. Oh, wait, you're okay. muted. All right, so I'm uh, in my office, so I'm on my desktop and I have the app, but I have nine people on there. If I want to see someone different, do you click on the bottom, the little circles to get a different square up? That is so that is a great question. Everybody else might have their cameras off. So those that have their camera on are automatically going to be at the front. 
I have one person that has no video, so I'm thinking only eight of us have our videos on, and everybody else has their video off. So that's My why. My video's on, but I don't see me. Uh, in the you nine. should be in the bottom corner of yourself. That would be Jamie in the bottom corner on my screen. Yeah, it's going to look different to how people connect and stuff I like mean, that. I, yeah, I don't see me at all. And I don't see, I did see a whole row of people going across the bottom, but now I don't. Yeah, the whole row of people are people who have either their video turned off, right, or just the extra people. So in Teams, you're only going to see the nine grid. If, if you don't see the nine grid, like I said, Microsoft just ruled this out. They said on the 29th, which is Friday, that it says log out of Teams, log back in, right? You could see four people or or one, depending on your setting. Gotcha. So they are working on making it more like Zoom where you can see more people or scroll, but they're not there yet at all. I, I think I had it, I had accidentally moved my screen. So that's why I couldn't see the bottom half. Yeah. But it also says that, um, should we be able to do chat? Because it, on mine it says chat in channel meetings is only available to team members. Oh, or you should be a team member. But let me let me just go ahead real quick and see, make sure. So I'm going to, yeah, I thought I added everybody, but I might have missed, missed just. So we'll come back and see. So, okay. Lynn, did that help answer your question? Yeah. Cheryl, you should be able to chat now. So, um, so yeah, so we're in a meeting. All right. And so you guys all kind of figured out like the layout. You should see 23 people or at the bottom. There's different photo icons depending if people have their settings set up. OK, um, I want to talk about the toolbar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and share my screen. Right. And show the different icons of of the toolbar. OK, so this I want to talk about meetings because this is what I think most of us might be doing a lot. And this is comparable to Zoom. So you have your video on off button, right? If you turn it off, you don't see your video. Same with microphone. I think you all figure that out. Screen share. I'll, I'll show that here in a, in a few minutes. Then you have your more options, which allows you to change your background, start recording, stop recording. Um, there's also a live captions that you can add as well. Um, it doesn't, if you record, it doesn't record the captions, but it just shows live captions. Um, raising your hand. And then instead of it being called chat, it's called show conversation. And if you, I want everyone to go ahead and click on it. So if you click on show conversations, you should get on the right side a panel of the conversations going on, right? And that's where you have a conversation with the people in the meeting, okay? It's only the people in the meeting that you have um, a conversation. Yeah, and I, I mine's don't disabled. Who? This is Peggy, mine's disabled. It's disabled too. So I added, does it give you the same? thing um still disabled okay cheryl yeah. were you able to get in anybody else have issues i thought i added everybody but i'm re-adding you to the team uh, peggy so you can try work okay mm -hmm. so you're it, you guys are all in the team so peggy yours disabled anybody else have issues with I, that my, so this is cheryl mine is still not Mine's still disabled and still saying I'm not in it. Okay. And I don't even see the raise hand option either. Hmm. Candace, oh for whatever it's with Ann Evans is, is not. Peggy, you are not able to see that either. I'm and still Anne. disabled. Okay. Candace. Okay. Well, and you what? guys, yeah. Cheryl and Peggy. Jennifer, both was that you? Up on the participants list twice. They show up as guests. And they also show up as team members who are not attending. And so they did something different than the rest of us when they logged in that caused them to not be logged in as normal team members. Uh, so they're not showing up in the participants. Hmm. Should we okay. get out in or can we do that? You, you can. You can. Because um, it should work seamless, but 
Thank you, Jennifer, for noticing that. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I mean, if you wanted to, to try, you guys just make sure you click join on the um, on the join screen, right? So um, within that, okay. Um, okay. So so and you, Cheryl and Peggy, were you guys the only ones that didn't see conversations? Anybody just, else? This is Gina. I have conversations. Am I on mute? I hear you. Uh, okay. I have com I have the chat, but I don't after that it doesn't give me a place to actually start a chat. It just says click here and then you click there and then it says something about an app and download and mm, okay. Okay. So it should be because I was gonna say at the bottom, let me go back and share my screen so you guys can see. And let me go back here. Right. So when you and then you have participants, show participants. So if you guys click on that, so conversation view is like you're chatting. And then at the very bottom, Gina, there should be a reply where you can make add a conversation. And I don't know if you need to scroll down or not, or yeah, I'm not I sure. Have, I don't have any of that. Okay. It says create a new contact group. It just says chat, recent contacts. Okay. I don't have any of that. Huh. Nope. Well, we're, we're this, I mean, this is good information um, that it doesn't go as seamless as it should <laughs> when you have a meeting. But, um, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm making notes so we can kind of figure out making sure that everybody has like the right program and that it's that everything's going to be loaded. So, all right. Thank you for letting me know um, within that. Can you guys so and if you don't, yeah, just if you afterwards send me an email and stuff like that um, so we can kind of help follow so I can help follow up and figure out what's going on. Actually, I think I just figured it out. I I didn't I clicked. Instead of clicking the one on the left menu bar, I clicked the one below your shared screen and it came up. But I don't know if that's your screen or my screen. Gotcha. OK. <laughs> that's OK. Um, 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 uh, the, the little uh, circles are at the bottom with the people faces and things. Is there a way to move those around? That is a great question, Gary. I don't know the answer to that. This is the first time I've been on a meeting with more than four people in teams. So with the nine grid, um, but I'll, I'll look into it and see what we can find out. OK. What about the bar with the record and video and microphone and raised hand? It's blocking your picture and, <coughs> and the nine grid. Can you move that around? You should be able to click on it and move it, but I'm um, I'm sharing the screen. I don't know if um, let me let me come back out. I was thinking you could move that bar, but maybe you can't. I, hmm. No, I haven't. I'm not able to click on it and move it. So let me re add that to Gary to the list and see if there's a way. So, OK. All right, so Converse, those are great questions, and and I'll send up a follow up too with some of the the issues and things um, or questions that we have. Kind of move out. So conversation view allows you to do the chatting, etc. Within that, uh, the participants when you view the participants in a meeting, this is where you all of you guys can invite somebody as well. You should be able to invite somebody. So if somebody so when I sent the invite out, I sent it through Teams, and we're going to do that here in a minute. There wasn't like a code that I could grab to give somebody. Um, there is this little link. If you see where it says invite someone, you have this little link. That allows you to copy a link. So you can copy that and then email somebody separately, right, within that. But I don't know if that... It, I, that should be a permanent link that that changes, but I haven't messed with that as much, right? But if you, um, when you put someone's name in this invite field, it invites only people within the center network, 
OK, you can invite people outside of center. All right, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. You just can't do it when you're on a meeting right here right now. Does that make sense? Any questions with that? So if you wanted to try, you could invite somebody um, as well within that. And then the raise your hand, obviously, when you hit the hand icon. And I'd be curious with Anne, you, Cheryl, Peggy, and Gina, like if you guys can hit the raise your hand icon or not, or if it's so if it's just the conversation and participant view. Um, um, I've got the hand. I just don't have the conversation. OK. Um, but you can invite the participants, right? Uh, I'm not sure how you did that. I have everything now, apparently. So when I got out and came back in, like I can see the file things on the side and. OK, so. So Peggy, the show participants is that little people icon next to where you hang up. Yeah, I, I've got that, but I don't think I can invite anybody. OK, I, it just shows the list of participants. No other options. OK, OK. All right, thank you. And I, I logged in via that, you know, my email reminder that I got today. Huh? Yeah. I logged in, so I'm, I'm not sure what the hitch is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. And so the other thing I just want to show um, about when we're in our virtual meeting is the more options, right? And so, uh, in the more options, this is where you can start recording. So. Right now, like I'm recording this, right? If somebody else try to hit start recording, it would basically say, hey, it would stop my recording and you guys would start it. It would start for you. Now, I don't know of a way there might be. I haven't learned. I'm, I'm uh, as I said, I'm still learning ways to set it uh, where you don't allow people like we're all used to in Zoom. Right, so right now everybody has full control to try to start and stop. Um, but I just wanted to, to share that and put that out there. So um, as Microsoft and I'm learning more stuff, I'll be sure to share this on. Um, one feature I do like is that turn on live captions. So if you turn that on, it shows it live, the caption. Um, and I think it's pretty good for, for what we have um, on here. And then if you wanted a different background, you could choose the background effects. So, so there are some different meeting settings that you could do under the more options. On the screen share, your window has to be open. And this is very similar to Zoom, right? So I have PowerPoint open. I have my desktop open. Um, there is a whiteboard where you can whiteboard and annotate. So if you um, wanted to try to explore that right so i'm gonna and then you get a stop screen share icon so i'm gonna stop the screen share i don't know if anybody wants to try to share their screen or not so anybody should be able to share a screen so and if you don't that's okay because you can always do what i do where you create we're going to create a new meeting and you could do a test meeting with yourself if you wanted to play around a little bit more with it okay you can share a screen and then loading whiteboard. And so once the whiteboard, I think Cheryl loaded this, then anybody can grab a pen and start drawing on it, recording it. And so you can kind of see how we're all kind of, you know, taking over sharing screen, that kind of stuff. I am going to show you here in a minute about some of the settings on the background. I left everything as normal, so I didn't, um, change any of that. Does anybody have any questions with the screen sharing? No. Nope. OK, so I'm going to take it back and I'm going to come back real quick and show a few more things and then we're going to create a meeting. So in your team area, and I know I kind of showed this at the beginning, you have a files area and that is where you have files for everybody to um, you, you can share with the team so anybody can load a file um, within that. So let me go back. And then 
you also have the post area which is where you can have um, conversations with the team now this is separate than the meeting that we're on okay the conversation tab in the meeting that is um all those that are on the meeting just because you're part of the meeting doesn't mean that you are part of the team does that make sense Say that again. Just because you're part of the meeting, that doesn't mean you're not part of the team. Candace, you're muted. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. I could have um, scheduled a meeting with all of us, but then made a team and not invited everybody in the team. Okay. And I think I think Marsha, when we get into actually creating a team here, it will make a little bit more sense um, on that. I'm going to take back over um, from screen sharing. So the post, I just what I wanted to point out within a team, the post area is only for members within the team. OK, that conversation area. Right. Participants. This is for everybody in the meeting itself. So you can create meetings, right? You can create meetings, but you also, and this is where I'm trying not to hopefully confuse everybody. You have a team, right? But you can create a meeting outside of a team. It doesn't have to be within a team. Have I completely lost you all? Yes. Okay. All right. Let me come back to that. Let's talk about joining a meeting and then I hopefully when I come back to that, it'll make a little bit more sense. OK, so hey Candace, can yeah. you make your can you make your screen share bigger or your PowerPoint bigger? Because some uh, of the smaller okay. font is hard to read. Thank you. You're welcome. I try not to do that just because I knew I was coming in and out. OK, so when you join a meeting, when you and you guys all figured it out, you're here, right? When you join a meeting, you would go to either your Outlook calendar invite, or you should if you everyone's using Outlook, which I think we all are. And then you would click the join button, okay? And all of you made it on the call, so I think you all uh, got that figured out, okay? Microsoft Teams allows you to have multiple multiple meetings at the same time. So I could be on this meeting and somebody else could be calling me and I could put you all on hold and go to that meeting and answer it and then come back. OK, now um, I don't think many of us will be doing that, but I wanted to make you aware of that because what happens is you get a screenshot like what you're seeing right here where it allows you it shows you OK. Bradley and three others are on hold and I could either hang up, hit the little phone I kind of hang up or I can go back to that meeting. OK, so you could have multiple meetings simultaneous. Are there questions with that? I just wanted to make you aware in case that kind of startled us last week when we were realized that you could do that. Questions? Lisa, is there any questions or anything you see? OK, so let me have you guys all try to create a meeting. All right, so when you're creating, Jamie, I just saw your thing, so I'll, I'll try responding later. Um, I saw that come up. OK, when you're creating a meeting, what you want to do is open up the Teams desktop app. So I know I'm sharing my screen. Hopefully you guys can. I don't know if you guys can follow along and do this. If not, I'll, I'll show you this and then I'll jump out off. Um, open the Teams desktop app and you click the new meeting desktop button. OK. And then there's a button on the right side. So you go to Teams right here, right? Third icon down. Click on the join or create team in the top right corner. Am I going too fast? 
Nope. Okay. When you create, join and create team, you then want to click on the team you want to access. So like right now we're in the Tech Tuesday, but you could also instead hit the create a new team button instead. So you can either join a team that you're already part of or any public teams. Now I made this team and I'm going to show this here in a minute. I made it private. So you had to be invited. Um, you couldn't just join or it couldn't just be a public team. Okay. So when you hit create a team, does everybody kind of see that? No, I can't find it. This is Gina. Gina, you can't see it either. I'm wondering if you're through a different option. Okay. On the left side. Okay. Because you should be able to see. Do you see teams on the left side? Yes. Okay. I got him on teams. And then do you see join or create team in the upper right corner within that teams? Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Now I'm then, back. Now from there. You can either, like I said, click in that team, but I, I'm going to actually create a new team, right? And so when you hit create a new team, you guys can make your own private team. Or if I wanted to make one for CTL staff, I can make a CTL staff team. Okay. So if you guys are following along and you're creating your own team, create a team. And then you have your various types of teams. Now, basically, these four types are templates that Microsoft has already set up. OK, um, staff, the staff one is they say Microsoft says it's for like staff leaders. Basically, it adds that staff notebook tab. It adds another tab um, on there, um, which is a OneNote notebook. And we're not going to get into OneNote or anything like that. The other tab, it basically makes two pages, the posts and the file pages. And so you can, but we can always add more to that. Um, the class, and I'm not going to cover that, that allows more um, assignments and grades and different features within that if you wanted to create a class um, type. So I would recommend if you want to just do staff or others, either one, they're pretty much identical templates. Um, so you can click on one of those types. And then you create a name for your team. So if I wanted to do just one with like instructional technology, I would say instructional technology team. And down at the privacy setting is where I can say I want to either public where anybody within center can join it or private only the team owners can add people. Those are your only two options, OK? So for uh, the Tech Tuesday today's session, I made it private because I just wanted to see if people, other people would see it. And you don't. If a private team, no one sees it, OK? Public people see it, and then they can click on to join. So are there questions with that within your group? So if you're doing one for your you and your team, and like if you're a, a leader and you're doing one for your team, I would make it private, right? If you're doing one for an organization, right? And you're like, I don't, I want everyone to see this. I would make it public. So it's going to be up to you how you want to want to do that. Can you ever change that down the road? Say you made you, it private and then you want to change it to public three weeks from now? Yeah, you can go in and change some of the settings. So. Oh within that. Yeah, great question. Other questions? Lisa, do I have anybody asking? I, I know Christy, thank you for monitoring the the conversations. Yeah, Christy's doing a good job at monitoring. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> any, any, any other questions? I have a question for Gary. Uh, when I click on team uh, icon on the left, I see general post file and staff notebook, but I don't see the create teams across the top. So, Gary, there might be a cookie crumb thing that says all teams up above your team. And if you click on all teams, 
there, then that should take you to where you see the join and create. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Jennifer, I think I saw what you said. So uh, you can invite external people to a meeting. So um, when you set create a new meeting, you can invite people um, outside. I don't think, I don't know if you can invite in external people to a team. Um, I was trying to test it with my AOL, but then Microsoft wanted me to verify a code. I had to create a new Microsoft account. And so I, I wasn't successful at that, but I want to continue to try uh, to see. Um, I think Christy is responding and other people are too. But um, within this right now, I know it's definitely center. Um, I know you can invite external people to a meeting, but I don't know if they can be part. They probably could be part of the team, but they have to have a Microsoft account. But I can do some more checking on it for you too. Are there other questions with setting up a team? So once you set up a team, right, then you get the next window to invite people. And you can skip that if you want. And if you do, that's fine. You can skip it. But if your team, like I already have the Tech Tuesday one today already created, if I wanted to add more people, if I went back to the Teams tab on the left side and click those three dots, which is our more action buttons, I can choose to add members edit the team, do some, uh, there's a link to a team. I haven't tried that. Uh, and then you can, um, re I guess, leave a team as well if you didn't want to be part of a team anymore. I know that's on there. So that's how you can add people as well. Any questions or comments? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to bounce out here in a minute. But one thing that Microsoft really prides itself in is communicating and why teams is is uh, why they consider teams the hub for collaboration and communication is that they have this type of ways to communicate. And if you guys are used to like other programs for communicating, I realize the spell the spell wrong, such as Slack or instant messaging, right? Once some of the things that uh, I, I put this on here, I thought would be helpful to communicate is if you wanted to send a message to the entire team, you would use the at team symbol. So I would say at team and then it would pop up Tech Tuesday and Microsoft team and it would send a notification to everybody. If I didn't use the at team, you guys wouldn't get a notification unless you logged into the team's desktop app. Okay. The, the basically, if you start getting used to messaging and communicating in this type of environment, the at symbol then pulls up. And then, so if I wanted to email Christy and message her, I can do at Christy. And when I start typing her name, she's going to pull up. And then I could send her a message and she, she would instantly get a notification. So when we, we're going to bounce out here in a minute and communicate, right? If you're, and I know some of you guys are already doing that. These are the proper ways that you want to communicate with your team is to remember that at symbol and then pull their name in. That way they get a message, right? They get, or sorry, message, they get the notification. So if they have it installed on their phone or desktop, a notification, you hear my iPad probably going off, they're getting a notification that it's there. Channels are within a team. And I, like I said, I'm gonna bounce off here to show you. They're basically, you could set up a different, so if I have the Tech Tuesday team, I can make a channel for, maybe we're doing subgroups. I'm gonna take everything into different subgroups. Right. So one subgroup is to look at better ways to collaborate. Right. And so I can create a channel for I have a general channel, but I can create a channel for collaborating. And then I could only send messages within that channel. And I know this is confusing until you see it. 
So some of their terminology within teams is a little bit different. And so I think just trying to understand uh, the terminology is something I just wanna make sure you guys are aware of. Um, we're gonna practice this here in a minute, but I just wanted to, wanted to show that. Questions, because I don't really wanna confuse you all, but I wanna make sure you guys are getting some of the information. Okay, all right. So um, within your channel settings, your different settings, I know Gina, you were asking about uh, managing or how to change it, right? If you click back on your team and went to the manage team aspect, you get the screen on the left side, manage team. On the right side, you get all your different type of settings, right? So I didn't modify any of the settings when I created this meeting or the team. So if you don't want people to have permission, there's a thing for guest permission. So you do have some settings in there. I haven't explored these in big detail, but I wanted to show you a screenshot of where that would be at, okay? Within the different settings. Um, there is also analytics. So you can look at like, how many messages did your team or channel get? What dates were popular? So you have a lot of analytics within that as well. So if you notice on the right side here, I think you see settings, analytics, channels are just your different like subgroups within a team. Um, and then you have members, if people are pending, et cetera. Okay, so there's a lot of different options and you get to that by clicking on these three dots under manage team. Okay. Do you have any questions within that yet? I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna stop sharing the screen for a second. Any questions within the teams tab? Candace, this is Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Uh, I've got a question. Um, so let's say that you have a file, like you've got your PowerPoint in the files section. Um, are you also, as the author of those PowerPoint, are you also saving them like on OneDrive or somewhere else? My concern is like, if I have files in lots of different places, I'm not gonna remember where I put things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I chose not to send it as a link. Like it uh -huh. recommended that. But basically because I have like three different devices, my home computer, then my office laptop. And so I am I had to go to a quiet space because I have two little girls running around upstairs. Right. So I, um, I ended up just saying, I'm gonna just download it on the desktop and just copy it over. But there are ways that you can link it within. And so it could be an organic file that, hey, here's the file within OneDrive, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, I chose not to do that because, mm -hmm. you know, you guys can download and create it. But if you wanted more of a file where everyone's communicating or editing mm -hmm. it together, mm -hmm. yeah, you would pull it from OneDrive and just um, it would be there. When, when you go to the files tab, you can edit it. And when you choose to edit, it's going to pop open either edit in Teams or edit in um, OneDrive or Word Online or PowerPoint Online. So... I understand what you're saying. Like mm -hmm. for for a normal group, if I was working with a group, I mean with like Christy Todd and I, instructional mm -hmm. tech, I probably would link everything right within that. So then that way I wouldn't have to worry about that. Through OneDrive? Through OneDrive, yeah. And I don't know okay. how many of you guys are actually using OneDrive. So right. the thing with Teams, and I know, I know we, Center, we've been slower to adopt using OneDrive, but if you guys start using OneDrive more, right, then obviously team integrates really nicely and really well within that. But it's getting everybody within your department, your program to kind of use it and be on the same page. And I know we're all not there yet uh, within that. But that's a great question. So, and I'm looking for like, you know, like I said, this is the first time I've had this many people and doing a workshop in a virtual, which is kind of strange. Um, so we can do some more screencasting and send out more information as people start to use this a little bit more with it. Great question. 
Are there other questions within that? Okay, so I know we have like five minutes left. I want to just um, just briefly talk about the activity and the chat and some of the other features within um, within Teams. So we are in a meeting, a virtual meeting. Meeting is part of the Teams, right? Teams program. When you go to, if you were to go to the calendar and click on calendar on your left side, do you all see it? That integrates with your Outlook. So if you use Outlook, right, that integrates with your Outlook calendar, right? And that's where you would go, create a new meeting, right, and schedule a new meeting to invite people. The, um, the other files, as Bruce mentioned earlier, that also integrates with Office 365, okay? So those are different elements that integrate with it. The activity tab, what that does is it basically shows you your activity across all of your teams. So if you're part of five different teams, when you click on activity, you're going to see uh, every, you're going to see activity from all the teams. So let me just show real quick um, right here so Elizabeth can see it. So your activity is going to highlight just all the teams. Now, if I clicked, and you can see I have different threads, but I clicked on this first one where it says Jennifer reacted to your post. If I look in the corner next to general where I have a, a box around, it says Tech Tuesday, TT for Tech Su Tuesday. Now, I can make my own graphic and do all that kind of stuff with it, but that's showing the activity for that one. If I clicked on one where it says Christy replied, see right underneath her, it says CTL staff. That's a different team. So your activity just gives you the activity across all your different teams, okay? The chat feature is the same. This is where if you wanted to have a private conversation with somebody or if you wanted to have a group conversation. So this is not within a meeting. This is completely separate. This is where you would do that. You would do it in the chat, right? And so... I I just have a couple examples up here. You can see one's with Lisa, one's with Christy and Todd, one's with an I instructional tech team, right? So if you wanted to only chat with somebody, you could just use the chat feature, right, within Teams, and you could do a one-on-one -on -one chat instead of email. But you could also do a group chat, right? And so this is outside of the meeting. Does that make sense? Within that, okay. Um, if you wanted to do a chat group or chat with a new person, you just click on that little notepad icon right there, and that's and then you would enter their name in the group. So I just wanted to show that. Your files, and this is how, um, and I should have gotten rid of that part. The files is what you were saying, Bruce. It's all your files. No one else can see them, right? So you can see all the different recent files within that. And your calendar, it syncs with your Outlook calendar um, within that as well. So the only thing that I, um, let me stop sharing, didn't get to really show that Microsoft is super proud and excited about is the app. So if you look in the bottom left corner above help, there's an apps feature that you can actually integrate different apps within Teams. So let's say you like to use the Planner app. There's a Planner app. There's, um, I know there's a whole bunch of different apps on there. I haven't tried to use any of the apps yet, but if you use a certain app within your, um, if you start using, there, I was hoping there was one for Slack because we're doing a Slack communication, which is kind of similar to the chat feature here in, in Microsoft, but there's not. Um, but there's a lot of, they're a polling app. So Jennifer, you might find some apps that you really like that work well in there So um, as well. But those are all within Teams. Like I said, the meeting that we're doing right now is is one element within that. Does that make sense? I was hoping we'd have more time for questions or discussions. 
Um, I know it's 11, so if you need to get off, but if you, if there are uh, questions, I just want to take one or two minutes if there's any questions or things that I need to address. Yeah, Kevin. Candace, I just noticed that when we were talking about the toolbar, I noticed that if you click on um, like in between the buttons, when your cursors um, appears, it'll make it disappear. Does, does that make sense? Uh, so when you click in between the toolbar, okay, when you click out, it disappears. Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Thank you. Sure. That's great, great tip. Any Anything else or anything that you guys would like to follow up with? Because I know this is just a quick, here's a little bit with Teams. Did everybody see the email from Andy from ITS about Teams? So I know ITS has been working with staff departments in particular. I don't know as much with faculty programs, but trying to get everybody to start working or using Teams. So as you're thinking about how we're going to move forward with it, you know, one thing you might want to work with your your colleagues and make sure they all have the software installed or put a help desk call in to get it installed. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Candace, Christy ha uh, Kristen has a question. Yeah, Kristen, thanks. Hi, Candace. Thanks Hi. for doing this. Um, I noticed I'm scrolling through the app, so I tried to like create a team, um, that there's a Moodle dashboard app if you click on like the class team. Mm -hmm. Does mm -hmm. that actually connect to Moodle? I don't know. That I'm I don't know. And I don't know if Christy's looked at that yet. There is a Zoom app too. I didn't want to say that. Um, and I know ITS was exploring that a little bit. Okay. Um, I don't know how that connects with Moodle, but that's something we can look at and see. Okay. Um, I did actually set up a class because Microsoft was really excited about what a class team looked like. And, and that was really cool, but it was very similar to Moodle. And so I know we don't want faculty doing the same kind of thing. I don't, Chris, you didn't look at that yet, did you? Oh, you're muted. Now she's having technical issues. So while Christy's trying to get there, are there any other questions? Do you guys feel like you have a little bit understanding, a little bit more with Teams? Yeah, and she's trying to fi fix that. And if you guys start exploring the apps, um, cause there's a lot that you can do with the apps. Um, I would love to get feedback from you all on what you've used or, Hey, this is really cool. Microsoft. I watched, um, one of their sessions. They had a planner app, which, which looked really neat. Cause they had a, here's a to-do list. Here's what needs to be done, et cetera. So, okay, Chris, I think you're in now. Oh no, that was somebody else. Okay, we can't hear. So Kristen, we'll follow back up with you guys. I'm gonna send up some follow-up email as well. So um, if you guys have some questions or things, some of the issues that some of you guys were encountering, we'll try to help troubleshoot and see what's going on. Um, but if there's anything you guys need at all or questions you have, please reach out to us. We're learning this um, with you guys as well. Okay. All right, thank you guys so much. I'm going to stop the recording and I'll share that out too with the team. So. Thank you, Kim.